Hello learners, this is Habiba with UGC Net Paper 2, Education, Unit 3, Learner and a Learning Process with the subtopic Mental Health and Mental Hygiene. Already we have discussed about the meaning, definition and also the topics related to adjustment and maladjustment. Today we are going to learn about defense mechanisms. Let's start with Freud's mechanisms. Sigmund Freud noted a number of ego defenses which he refers to his daughter Anna developed these ideas of ego defenses and elaborated on them. Now what is defense mechanism? Let's understand ways of coping with difficult feelings. That is your mind's way of dealing with stress. How any individual or any person try to deal the difficult situations or feelings, those ways are called defense mechanisms. So according to him, Freud, memories banished to the unconscious or unacceptable drives or urges do not disappear. So according to Freud, what he says, whatever memories, banished means sent up sent to the unconscious or unacceptable drives or urges, they will never disappear. They continue to exert a powerful influence on behavior. Obviously, whatever memories are stuck in our mind, they will definitely give some impression to our behavior. The forces which try to keep painful or socially undesirable thoughts and memories out of the conscious mind are termed as defense mechanism. So, whatever forces, the memories we have in our, in our mind may be painful or socially not acceptable thoughts or memories out of the conscious mind which are there, those are called uh, defense mechanisms. So, let's understand in detail about defense mechanisms here. Please do watch till the end of this video because we are going to discuss different examples. Then you will never forget the topic related to defense mechanisms. Now, these mechanisms are unconscious psychic processes that provide the ego with relief from the state of psychic conflict between the intruding id the threatening super ego and the powerful influences emanating from the external reality. In Sigmund Freud's theory, we understand the three levels three in the mind, three parts in our mind. That is, let's understand, for example, id is here, super ego is here, ego is here. Whatever the conflict between this id and super ego, ego has to bring some solution or take the decision here. Due to these forces in the mind opposing and battling against each other, anxiety signals and integral danger. Let's see through one example. For example, it says, I want this work to be done right now. Then super ego enters and says, first see whether this work is a good work or bad one or if you do this work the consequences will be good or bad you have to decide in this conflict now ego comes into role to take the decision so the influences of id and ego uh, to the ego has to take the decision here otherwise this battle between id and ego will lead to stress which is very danger to any individual. These mechanisms come into play to enable the ego to reach compromise solutions to problems that it is unable to solve by letting some component of the unwelcome mental contents emerge into conscious in a disguised form. Yes. Now what happens here? What are these mechanisms? When these mechanisms will come out of the mind? When ego is not able to solve or decide? Uh, just now I gave you the example. It says I want this work to be done right now. And super ego says you see whether this work is good or bad. When ego is not able to decide to do this work or not, some disguised elements form in our mind. 
those are the defense mechanisms defense mechanisms protect the individual against anxiety and from the awareness of internal or external dangers or stresses when even super ego are giving some problem to ego what will happen anxiety and stress will come to remove this stress and anxiety this defense mechanisms enter into the mind which will uh, throw away or which will uh, give some ways to cope up with these difficult problems the individual defense mechanisms are divided conceptually and empirically into related groups that are referred to as defense levels so whatever mechanisms are there they are divided conceptually and empirically into related groups those groups are called called as defense levels healthy person normally use different defenses throughout life obviously whoever are the healthy persons they obviously try to find some solution not to have any stress or anxiety that means continuously throughout the life they will apply these defense mechanisms an ego defense mechanism becomes pathological only when its persistence use leads to mal adaptive behavior such that the physical and or mental health of the individual is adversely affected so what is an ego defense mechanism pathologically if any person is mentally ill health ill health is there unhealthy so what happens here these persons will adapt some mal adaptive behavior for example uh, if the person is not uh, having any uh, parents are not giving proper care or, or attention so what happened to the child he will go into stress if he goes into stress what will happen he will adapt some mal adaptive behavior uh, he will find uh, happiness in wrong things so what will happen in that case he will go into some adverse effects so this is this happens if um, defense mechanisms are not there in that child so the purpose of ego defense mechanism it it, it to protect the mind or self ego from anxiety and or social uh, sanctions and or to provide a refuge from a situation with which one cannot currently cope so what is the purpose of this ego defense mechanism to protect the mind or self or ego to go from to uh, not to let the anxiety enter into that person so so to come up with the all these to take refuge from all these these defense mechanisms work very well so defense mechanisms are unconscious coping mechanisms that reduce anxiety generated by threats from unacceptable impulses whatever our impulses are which are not acceptable in the society if they are not fulfilled then anxiety will be there in the personality these are sometimes confused with coping strategies how efficiently these mechanisms are to strengthen the ego and to what extent they further different forms of compromise formations that may turn out to be psycho neurotic symptoms depends on how successfully the ego reaches a higher or lesser degree of integration of these conflicting forces in the mind so how efficiently we are using these mechanisms that will depend on otherwise some neurotic symptoms will come out uh, successfully the ego reaches uh, to a higher or lower degree of integration of these conflicting forces in the mind the more the ego is blocked in its development for being entangled in its earlier conflicts cling clinging to archaic modes of functioning the greater is the possibility of scum scumbing to these forces so the more ego is blocked in its development what will happen some fixation will come they will not be able to function properly so what will happen in that 
anxiety stress will take in the mind and it will go in wrong direction where the person will not be able to live happily in order to ensure the maintenance of the level of organization achieved the ego has to protect itself from from the invasion of instinctual demands that is drives of the id from the return of the repressed contents there are a large number of defense mechanisms the main ones are summarized below let's understand one by one the first one is identification with the aggressor that means a focus on negative or feared traits that is if you are afraid of someone you can practically conquer that fear by becoming more like them an extreme revolt against others by making oneself similar to them only uh, let's understand this with one example here identification with aggressor uh, suppose a person is not able to uh, have uh, is feared of something afraid of someone what will happen practically they want to conquer that fear by becoming like them they will become behave how the other person is behaving so extreme revolt against their thoughts oneself similar to that they will not work they will behave similar to the person who are they are feared of or not they don't like that person even then they try to behave like that person that is identification with the aggressor then repression this was the first defense mechanism that freud discovered and arguably the most important repression is an unconscious mechanism employed by the ego to keep disturbing or threatening thoughts from becoming conscious so what happens in repression whatever thoughts are there rep uh, uncon in the unconscious mind the mechanism employed by the ego that will be disturbed keep on disturbing or threatening thoughts they will become conscious becoming conscious so in the repression the thoughts whatever are there in the unconscious mechanism they will get disturbed here thoughts that are often repressed are those that would result in feeling of guilt from the super in the oedipus complex aggressive thoughts about the same sex parents are repressed this is not a very successful defense in the long term since it involves forcing disturbing wishes ideas or memories into the unconscious where although hidden they will create anxiety now the third one projection this involves individual attributing their own thoughts feelings and motives to another person thoughts most commonly projected on to another are ones that would cause guilt such as aggressive and sexual fantasies or thoughts so what happens in this the own thoughts or feelings or motives of another persons here commonly they are projected here so which will cause the guilt such as aggressive and sexual fantasies or thoughts then the fourth one is displacement it is the redirection of an impulse usually aggression on to a powerless substitute target the th target can be a person or an object that can serve as a symbolic substitute someone who feels frustrated by his or her superiors may go home and beat up any family member we will understand all these with examples towards the end in the conclusion let's understand what are all these terms here now sublimation this is similar to displacement but takes place when we manage to displace our emotions into a constructive rather than destructive activity example might be artistic so sublimation for freud was the uh, cornerstone of civilized life arts and science are all sublimated sexuality now the sixth one is denial it involves blocking external events from awareness if some situation is just too much to handle the person just refuses to experience it 
as you might imagine this is primitive and dangerous defense no one disregards reality and gets away with it for long it can operated by itself or more commonly in combination with other more subtle mechanisms that support it now regression this is movement back in psychological time when one is faced with stress when we are troubled or frightened our behavior often become more childish or primitive a child may begin to stuck their behavior as it is behaved by a child during naughtiness now the eighth one is rationalization it is the cognitive distortion of the facts to make an event or an impulse less threatening we do it often enough on a fairly conscious level when we provide ourselves with excuses but for many people with sensitivity egos making excuses come so easy that they never are truly aware of it in other words many of us are quite prepared to believe ourselves that means whatever we are doing that is correct for us we will make excuses for not to accept others opinions reaction formation this is where a person goes beyond denial and behaves in the opposite way to which he or she thinks or feels by using the reaction formation the id is satisfied while keeping the ego in ignorance of true motives conscious feelings are the opposite of the unconscious love hate shame disgust and moralizing our reactions formation against sexuality usually a reaction formation is marked by showiness and compulsiveness the last one is compensation the term compensation refers to a type of defense mechanism in which people overachieve in one area to compensate for failures in another for example individuals with poor family lives may direct their energy into excelling above and beyond what is required at work so now let's conclude this topic here defense mechanisms are psychological strategies used by the unconscious mind to manipulate deny or distort reality to protect the mind or self or ego defend against feelings of anxiety and personally unacceptable impulses or stimuli now defense mechanisms we till now we understood about projection identification sublimation sublimation denial rationalization regression repression reaction formation displacement compensation given by sigmund freud along with his daughter anna freud now let's understand identification identification is a adjustment mechanism which enables one to achieve satisfaction from the success of other people groups or organization that is trying to become like someone else to deal with anxiety just now i told you the example if the person doesn't like that person or fear of that person the out of fear they will try to behave like them and they will not show their fear in front of those people so what is the example here mary really admires suzy the most popular girl in school and tries to copy her behavior and dress that is identification the second one we understood about repression unconscious and involuntary forgetting of painful ideas events and conflicts for example a nursing student who failed the recent board exam can't remember any of the questions asked then projection person attributes their own unacceptable impulses to others that is example a, sm- a spouse may be angry at their significant other for not listening when in fact it is the angry spouse who does not listen then displacement an emotional feeling is transferred to person or object who are less dangerous than those who initially aroused the motion then sublimation channeling of unacceptable and potentially disruptive impulses 
thoughts or emotions into socially acceptable behavior that is dealing with emotional stressors by using the energy in other usually constructive activities that is punching back to channel angry impulse that is in sports if i am suppose i am angry from of somebody uh, i won't be able to uh, harm that person but i will take another way that is punching the bag uh, taking out my stress out here through punching the bag whatever ang uh, angry or uh, whatever things i have against that person i will take all those things by punching the bag now denial the individual does not accept the existence of something that is disturbing that means denial if anything is disturbing the they will not try to find out the things but they will uh uh run away from that whatever disturbing them then regression when adult defense mechanisms stop working for us we regress to a personality we had at a childhood that means as a adult if uh, we are not able to have that stop that thing which we don't like we will start behaving as uh, like a uh, uh, how we behaved in our childhood for example when an adult does not take responsibility he says it's not my fault it's her fault that is regression immature patterns of behavior emerge such as bragging then rationalization involves explaining an unacceptable behavior or feeling in a rational or logical manner avoiding the true reasons for the behavior for example ian goes out of drinking the night before a big test rationalize his behavior by saying the test is not all that important then reaction formation reaction formation reduces anxiety by taking up the opposite feeling impulse or behavior let's see the definition you turn your feeling into its opposite that is taking the opposite belief because the true belief causes anxiety that is true belief they will not accept because it will cause anxiety they will take opposite of that example hating a particular race or culture and then embracing that race or culture to the extreme they will keep inside the actual feeling and they will show other feeling outside then compensation a person tries to make up for his or her weakness by developing strengths in other areas for example a struggling student with a learning disability becomes a leader in the art club what is harmful here here not trying to overcome the weakness is harmful for example any person is not good in studies they will go in sports that is compensation all mentally healthy individuals use defense mechanisms regularly these become pathological only when their persistent use leads to maladaptive behavior such that the physical or mental health of the individual is adversely affected so sigmund freud was one of the original proponents of this concept so we come to the end of the session thanks for your attention and time as motivation please do like share subscribe and comment below happy learning